This is Trend Following Radio, where great thinking comes alive. Nobel Prize winners, legendary traders, best-selling authors, and the pros that know what drive us irrational human beings. I am your host, Michael Covell. Not filtered, raw, honest. That's my passion. I have two pretty good stories today about how not to think and one good example of how to think as part of my two examples of how not to think. First, to get the ball rolling, I'm going to play a clip from Cliff Asness, who runs a very large fund called AQR. I don't know if he calls it a fund, whatever, exactly, but very successful. A lot of assets under management. One of the things that Cliff does is trend following among many strategies. A friend and associate, Jim Byers, texted me the other day and he said, Hey, Mike, check out this interview with Cliff Asnes at Goldman Sachs and go to this time code. And Cliff gives a nice thought on trend following. So I did. It's about 90 seconds. I saved it as a clip, put it on Twitter. Tagged Cliff. I have no contact with Cliff. I don't know Cliff yet. And I posted it. Now, of course, I kind of know that people are going to check it out. It's kind of interesting. And Cliff retweeted it. Very cool. Let me play that clip so you got the context of what's going on. The other thing, um, a big product line for us is trend following strategies. We think of these as very different. In most of what we're doing, we're trying to create within the constraints of what the client has asked us to do, the highest risk adjusted return. Uh, trend following strategies are trying to create something that on average does well in really bad times and doesn't cost you a ton. And trends seem to have that property. Um, regular long short doesn't necessarily have that property. It's market neutral, some good times. Uh, trend following has been really good. It, it's not the same as buying a put, Buying a put always works if the market crashes. Trend following usually works. Usually is not as good as always. Um, write that down. <laughs> but our belief is buying insurance in form of a put forever is a very large negative expected return strategy. And trend following is a modest positive expected return. So it's imperfect protection, but with, with a, a negative cost, not a not a positive one, and, and that's been going like gangbusters too. Um, that uh, essentially the the change from a interest rates will be negative forever to to the world we're in now. Um, like like anything for trends, uh, trend following uh, certainly far from always works. If the world changed on a dime, trend following misses it. Right? Trend following needs a trend to follow, uh, but we've seen a year and a half of the world transitioning and transitioning to this. So. It's, it's been quite kind to us. I thought that's a pretty cool clip. Pragmatic, practical, speaking the truth. Maybe the only caveat that I would add to it, and maybe Cliff would add this point as well. But when he made his example, he said, well, if the world changes on a dime, trend following won't be successful. Well, a lot of things probably won't be successful if the world changes on a dime. I'm not being facetious here. I'm not trying to say this is what he was saying. But let's say we have nuclear Armageddon. Well, a lot of trading strategies are going to go to hell in a handbasket at that point in time. Now, I think the cool thing, just to again add to what Cliff is saying, historically, there have been instances of, quote, crashes. 1987, October of 08. Trend following did very well in those two moments of time. It wasn't because trend following was just, quote, short stocks. Trend following had positions that had been established long before those final market blow-offs. So I don't know Cliff's exact position on my clarification here, but, you know, if the world changes on a dime, a lot of things are going to have trouble. Again, I share the belief that Cliff gave in that clip. It's a great little clip. And if you don't understand it, going through every word that Cliff states is a great educational process. I Meaning you're going to learn a lot if you don't understand every word that Cliff is saying in that approximate 90 seconds, if you don't understand, and if you go figure it out, 
you're going to have a hell of a lesson. Now, one person went ahead and commented on my Twitter and said, buying a put, he's quoting Cliff, buying a put always works if the market crashes. Trend following usually works, usually is not as good as always, end quote. So some guy posts that. And I said, you left out serious context. I mean, here's the 90 second clip of Cliff. He says the full context because after Cliff says buying a put always works if the market crashes, trend following usually works, usually is not as good as always. At the end of that, and I said this on Twitter, Cliff says, but there's a price to be paid if you're buying puts all the time. A negative expectation is building there. So this guy who's watching what Cliff says, doesn't fully understand it, takes him out of context and tries to make the point that buying a put is better than trend following. And that's not at all what Cliff said. And I guess the reason I beat this horse, so to speak, is because this is par for the course today. People take things out of context to tell an entirely different story. Just literally taking words from a sentence, in this case, Cliff's 90 second clip, taking words, cutting it out, putting it out of context, and then trying to make the case for something else. It's absolutely amazing that this is the kind of world we live in. I mean, don't people feel like losers when they do that? Don't you feel like a loser if some guy like Cliff, again, I don't know Cliff, but he's highly successful. He's built a hell of a firm. He's built a hell of a net worth. I mean, the guy knows what the hell he's doing. Maybe he's not perfect. That's not the point. He's got enough street cred to be out there engaging. So it just strikes me as odd that here's some nobody, and it's fine to be a nobody. Everybody starts as a nobody. But if you are currently a nobody and you want to interject yourself into the conversation, and then you go ahead and misquote and take a successful billionaire trend-following trader out of context to make some other point, quote, that puts are better than trend-following. Man, people are just strange. Now, let me give example number two. Some guy has been texting me for like six months. He doesn't understand trend-following at all. He is convinced that something like price action alone, the momentum of price action, is not enough. There must be some secret sauce that I'm not sharing with him about how it really happens. Now, of course, as most new traders are, he's focused only on the entry. And he says to me that he wants to be really narrow and he wants to focus only on the long side only on the long side, so a stage two uptrend, not sideways stage one, stage three topping, or stage four downtrend. I mean, I hear something like that. I just know this guy doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. He has no clue. I don't know what he's mixed up in. I don't know who he's taking that information from, but it's not trend following. And that's what I told him. But you know, if you got strangers at hand and you're telling a stranger, and this guy's a stranger, they doesn't know what the hell he's doing, which is my MO. I don't really mind doing it. I've been doing it for a long time. Well, they get upset. They get upset. They start coming back at me and firing at me. Well, you can't answer my question about an entry. I said, well, I told you. It's a price action momentum indicator, something like a breakout. That's it. Now, of course, he's stuck in the predictive mindset. He wants to predict the quote trend. So he's not going to understand that. He's just not going to get it. Then he tells me he's a student of two other traders who guess what? They're not trend following traders. So he kind of keeps dripping information out to me, keeping me in the dark as I go along with this email conversation to see what unfolds, to see if I can learn another way that people think incorrectly. So he finally tells me that his way of thinking is based on two other traders, successful traders, not trend-following traders. I try to explain that to him. 
Then he comes back to me and he starts talking about trends and tightness. Tightness. I mean, come on. If you're listening right now and you know something about trend following and you hear some adjective, something like tightness, where the hell does that fit in? That doesn't fit in. It's not objective. It's some kind of squishy, emotional something. It's like this guy is sharing with me, you know, his childhood trauma. It was tight. Now, he keeps telling me we're saying the same thing, just different words. No, we're not saying the same thing. So then finally he comes out and he tells me, well, I just don't tell people how to do trend following. I should do that better in my books. And I said, well, I guess you missed chapter five of my book, The Complete Turtle Trader. Now, of course, a guy like this, who I don't know, just some stranger, he doesn't want to lose. That's what his motivation is. He doesn't want to lose. So I correctly point out that chapter five is about how the turtle traders traded. Can you guess what he came back with? That doesn't work anymore. That's dated. It goes on and on and on. Now, of course, at some stage of the game, I stopped this conversation. But this way of thinking that people have, I never did anything like this. I just kept my mouth shut until I could find out how the best really did it. And how do the best really do it? The best trend-following traders? They say to themselves, what markets are we going to track? When will we enter? When will we exit with a loss? When will we exit with a gain? And how much are we going to bet on each trade? Notice there's nothing in there about tightness. There's nothing in there about an uptrend. There's nothing in there about spotting a trend. I mean, trend following is a great name, but it describes what happens after you implement the trading strategy. But when you get an entry signal, you don't know there's going to be a trend. If you've got a trading strategy that only has 40% winners and you take an entry, how the hell do you know if that's going to be a trend? You don't know. You don't have any idea. And what can happen when you don't have any idea about what's going to happen? You can end up with a trend-following track record like Paul Mulvaney. Paul runs Mulvaney Capital. His 2022 20, performance for the year through August is 99.83%. We can round that up. He's up 100% for the year for 2022, first eight months. Now, this is a trend following strategy. Everything could turn around and go the other way. Maybe he ends up only 20%. On the year. But the fact that he's up 100% through eight months, I mean, anybody with a pulse should say right now, I need to find out what the hell he's doing. Now, of course, he's not the only one. Dunn Capital is up big for this year. Cliff Asnes makes the point his firm is doing great this year. A lot of trend following traders are doing great. It's a great year for trend following. But I want to read the numbers for Paul Mulvaney's month-by-month -month performance for the first eight months. It's just interesting to hear them. January, up 14.71%. February, up 6.49%. March, up 21.57%. April, up 26.45%. May, uh-oh, big problem here. Down, minus 2.18%. June, up 7.74%. July, minus 13.93%. And August of 2022, Valvani Capital was up 17.31%. Maybe you're in school right now. Maybe you've got a kid in school right now. Maybe you wasted your time in a finance class in school a long time ago. I don't care where you are, what age you are, what nationality you are. If you don't know how those first eight months have been generated in 2022, you're flying blind. Okay, you could have some other trading strategy, something else figured out, but you need to know what this is too. 
you need to know what trend following is too. And I got to figure also just people that like puzzles, people that like to solve problems. I mean, here I am, I come on this podcast and I tell you about some trader who's up 99.83% through the first eight months of 2022. And if you don't currently know how he's up that much, well, damn, that's a hell of a lot more fun challenge to go figure out than turning on CNN or Fox News, isn't it? I mean, trying to solve how those eight months of profits were generated and you can figure it out if you really want to. That sounds like fun. I mean, I know how it's done, but do you know how it's done? And the really crazy thing about that track record that I just read, Paul Mulvaney's track record, Mulvaney Capital, is that we've not had a blow off yet. We've not yet had a collapse yet. Now, of course, yes, some commodity markets have moved big up and down. But equities have not really had one of those, quote, magic moments that you might see in a bear market like October of 2008. And just for context, Paul was up 45% for October of 2008. Yes, just to be clear, he made 45%. Gosh, I hope I'm quoting this right. I know it was over 40%. I'm pretty sure it was 45. 45% for one month, October 2008. Now, I hope some folks still remember what happened in October 2008, right? This is where the S&P just cratered. Again, how did Paul Mulvaney make that money in October 2008? How did he make that money the first eight months of this year? Kind of a side tangent that I went off with Mulvaney's track record beyond the guy that was restating Cliff Asnes's video beyond the guy that was writing me emails, not understanding trend following, lost in some kind of hero worship. I mean, that is a great way to end this too, today. Don't fall trap to hero worship. Even the best traders don't want you to do that. I'll guarantee you the Cliff Astonis of the world, the Jerry Parkers of the world, the Ed Sakotas of the world, they want you to know. They want you to understand. Of course, they like to be respected. Everyone wants to be respected. But they're teachers, ultimately. And they want you to understand. So, just remember, everybody puts their pants on the same damn way. Some folks might be a little brighter. Some folks might get a little luck on their side. But everyone puts their pants on the same way. The trick is, can you, while you're putting your pants on the same way as everyone else, can you learn to think like the best? Can you learn to think like the best? If you can put yourself in a place where you learn to think like the best, life is easy. Life is pretty damn cool. But... If you allow yourself to let the ego control you, I will guarantee you, life will look not exactly how you planned when you reach that ripe old age of retirement and or death. I see a time when those awake will understand how to make money in up, down, and surprise markets. Whether new trader or experienced, college student or financial advisor, protecting against a crash or just trying to make a lot of money, Trend Following offers everyone an answer in uncertain times. To get started immediately, send me an email, michael at covell.com. I will send you the right Trend Following steps to take along with my free video. But if you want to buy and hold, Trust the government and trust Wall Street. This is absolutely not for you.